Perfect square trinomials. Uh, it looks like 16x squared plus 24x plus 9. Okay, you know it's a perfect square when the first thing okay, uh, is a square and the second okay, when b is a square. Right? Which this was one of our special products. Remember the, the squares? Okay? Um, that would give us a perfect square trinomial. All right, so if it asks you to recognize, is this a perfect square trinomial, look. Is the first thing a square? Is the second thing a square? Is the thing in the middle, okay, the square root of the first thing times 2 times the square root of the, the last thing? So is 24 4 times 3 times 2? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Okay, now we're now we're going to solve these. So write these down. All right, let's factor these. Five x squared minus eighty. Okay, now also it doesn't say here, but if you can't factor it, then you can write prime. But this can be factored. What can I take out of five x squared minus eighty? Is there common factors? Yeah. yeah. There's sixteen is a common factor of five and eighty. Oh no. No. How about is five a common factor? Yeah. So I'm left with x squared minus. Okay, what's 80 minus 5? Or divide by 5. 16, thank you. Now, x squared minus 16 is difference of a square, which we did yesterday. Right? Difference of a square just means it's the first thing plus uh, the square of the first plus the square of the second, or the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. Right, difference square, you take the square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. Alright, and that's as factored as much as it can be. So that's our answer. Alright, let's look at 9x squared minus 6x minus 35. Um, is there anything I can take out? No. Okay, one's the only common factor there, so we we don't do it. Is this a perfect square trinomial? Yeah. No. Is thirty-five a square? No. Okay, so it's not like the problem before, where it'd just be a squared plus two ab minus b squared or plus b squared. So. What we do is we just factor this, All right? Uh, so what would multiply to give or add to give us this? Multiply to give us nine times thirty-five, which is three negative thirty negative three fifteen. So what adds to give us negative six? Multiplies to give us negative three fifteen. <laughs> Alright, if you take 315, the easiest thing to do is just take 315 and divide it by numbers that you would think would go into it. Well, 315 divided by 15 is 21. So we have 21 and 15. If you subtracted those, would you get negative 6? Okay, so you'd have to make the bigger number negative. Alright, so negative 21 times 15. All right, so we do 9x squared uh, minus, we do 21x plus 15x minus 35. What can I take out of 9x squared and negative 21x? Three. 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 What about anything else? 3x. What's left? 3x minus 7. Okay. What can I take out? 15x and negative 35. 5. What's left? 3x minus 7. 3x minus 7. So there's our answer. 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 7. All right, let's do this one. 
So what adds to give me five? What multiplies to give me 12 times 25, which is 300? Uh, 5 times 60 would give us 300, but with that, um, which, by the way, this is negative 300, so one of them is going to be positive, and, and the bigger one's going to be negative because B, our 5, is positive. Um, would they subtract and give us positive 5? No. 30 and 10. 30 and 10. Would they subtract to give you 5? All right, you're thinking the right direction, though. 15. Okay, let's take 300 divided by 15. It gives me 20. Would this subtract to give me 5? Yes, it would. All right, so there's our, there's our key right there. So 12x squared. Um, I'm going to do 20x. Do uh, negative 15x minus 25. What can I take out of 12x squared and 20x? Two. Just two? <coughs> I'll take four out. What's uh, four x. Four x out? What's left? 3x minus, 3x minus five, plus 5. Yeah. What can I take out of negative 15x and negative 25? Just five? Yes. Negative five, good. What's left? What's negative 15 divided by negative five? Three. three. So we have three X minus five. Or plus five, right? Negative 25 divided by negative five is positive five. So there we go. Four X minus five times three X plus five. There's your answer. Okay, let's write this down. So we have 9x squared minus 48x equals negative 64. So we're going to solve these. So what we need to do is make 0 on one side. So I'm going to rewrite this with 0 on the side. So all I do is add 64 to both sides. Moving it over. This is what we call a perfect square trinomial. Okay, the first thing is a square, this, the last thing is a square, and it looks like the middle is 2 times the square root of the first times the square root of the second. Because what's the square root of the first? 3. three. What's the square root of the second? 8. What's 3 times 8? 24. 24. What's 24 times 2? 48. 48. So this is the perfect square. All right. So please stop doing that. Well, when it's like this, then if you look back from that first slide, okay, and then you just take the square root of the first, right, minus, uh, it would be the square root of the second, which would be 8, right, which would be squared, okay, and we're going to find when that equals 0, okay, so we just have to do it, just do it one time where 3x minus 8, equals zero. So what do I need to do to get x by itself? Add eight. You need to add eight to both sides. That leaves me a three x equals eight. Then what? Remove by three. X equals eight thirds. And there's my answer. Shang is asking why I went from 3x minus 8 squared to 3x minus 8. Well, 3x minus 8 squared okay, is the same thing as 3x minus 8 times 3x minus 8. I only need to solve for one of those, right? Okay. All right, write this down. This is a perfect square trinomial if you look. All right. Uh, a squared is a square. 36 is a square as well, right? And 12 would be 2 times the square root of the first times the square root of the <coughs> second, right? 2 times 6. So 
all we have to do is write the square root of the first one plus the square root of the last one. Because if you were to take a plus 6 times a plus 6, you would get a squared plus 12a plus 36. Now, I only need to do it one time. Okay, because a, if one of the a's equals 0, that's only what matters, so I subtract 6. So a is negative 6. Let's talk about square root property. Okay, so write this down. This x squared equals 25. This means that x could be the square root of 25, either positive or negative. Because what is 5 times 5? What is negative 5 times negative 5? 25. So the square root of 25 could be positive 5 or negative 5. That's what this is saying. All right. So they give us this. Solve y minus 6 squared equals 81. What I want to do is get rid of the square root squared, okay, the 2, the exponent of 2. So what I do is I square root both sides. Remember what you do to one side, if you do it to the other, it remains equal. y minus 6 squared, the square root of that is just y minus 6. No, it does not equal 9. It equals positive or negative 9. Okay. It could be either one, because the square root of 81 could be 9 or it could be negative 9. So what we do, we solve for y minus 6 equals 9, and we solve for y minus 6 equals negative 9. When you see which y, which either one will make this come true. So we add 6 to both sides, y is 15, add 6 to both sides, y is negative 3. There's my two answers, 15 and negative 3. If you put in 15, 15 minus 6 is 9, 9 squared is 81. If you put in negative 3, negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9, negative 9 squared is 81. Both make this true. Let's do one more problem like this. x plus 2 squared equals 12. Okay, so we square root both sides. Okay. This makes this x plus 2. Okay. The square root of 12, does anyone know what square root of 12 is? Okay. It's not a whole number, is it? No. So what we do, we can just write this as plus or ne minus negative, or the square root of 12. So plus or minus the square root of 12. We can just leave it as this. Okay. So what I do is I... Subtract 2 to both sides. So x could be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12. That is my answer. Alright. So I can leave it like this. Now you can go ahead and find out what the square root of 12 is, which it is 3.46410161516. What's easier to write? Square 12 or 3.46410161516? Square 12. Okay? So negative 2 plus or minus square 12. Okay. Here's your assignment.